Before I went to Bimo school, I got excluded from the same school six times because uh, I used to beat up everybody for no no reason at all. And the the little kids who were like Mayo's age, who were like, what is Mayo? You one? You two. They, they never used to walk near me, never talk near me. They were scared. To come near you? Yes. Nobody used to come near me. The needs of the children are quite complex and diverse. Some of the children have been neglected, physically abused, emotionally abused, sexually abused. Um, their needs haven't been met within the family setting for, for difficulties that, that span a, a whole broad range. Um, some of the children have needed to go into care. Some children um, have more organic difficulties such as ADHD, um, autism, Asperger's. Um, the children here will have all got full statements of need. They've attended mainstream schools where their needs haven't been appropriately met um, and they've tended to then be excluded because they've acted out those needs. You know, when a child first arrives in the school, it's very likely that you might be seeing some of their most extreme behaviour because obviously they're in a kind of fear situation or they're in a situation where they're completely unaccustomed or they're in a situation where they feel they have to prove themselves to all of their kind of colleagues. At Bearmund Primary School in Southwark, staff work hard to rebuild pupils' self-confidence. They aim to provide a supportive, structured environment allowing pupils with a wide range of social, emotional and behavioural difficulties to achieve their targets and succeed. Each day begins with a basic skills session. In the morning during basic, um, we're coming here and we're looking at our files here and we have different basics that we have to do and then we do them for 45 minutes. This is maths and this is like literacy and spellings and, and like writing in your diary as well. We have our targets at the top, so we need to follow our, what the targets say. She brought out a collection of United magazines and posters. Every child's got their own target that is set for them, um, a main target that's been broken down into smaller pieces. From that we look and see how they're going, but Derek's quite a capable reader. Menacely. Menacingly. <laughs> Whatever that word says. Menacing. Mm. Menacingly. Menacingly. Whatever that word says. Okay. He doesn't Don't like it. Don't you Went no. Classical music players, boys come in, they immediately get to their desks, know what's expected of them. It settles them in for the morning, so it makes it a bit easier to teach them. When so now we know that half of 24 is what? Six. No. Mm, 26. No, don't guess. Look at what I'm doing. Uh, 12. 12, that's better. I think the basic skills is good for them because let me find a metaphor for it. Let's say it's like football training. It's basically them doing kick-ups, they're practicing their skills. So therefore, they will find the rest of the day's lessons easier because they have practiced these skills that they need to implement in these lessons. I'm doing my daily diary and Miss, Miss writes in um, the daily diary and asks and asks and writes our targets in and asks us what and tells us what to do and Miss has told me Miss has told me what things I would like what things I would like to um, change and things that I like about myself. Okay. Um, I like the fact that I'm a boy. I am very smart and intelligent and I am very good with computers. I did count this. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Which is that? Sixty-nine. Yeah. Okay, well I'll go over this. Runes. Runes is five, so what's the top two? Swearing is ten minutes, automatic, and walking out of class is ten minutes. And what about if we make a new one? Cussing somebody's mum is twenty minutes. That's ten. But what usually you guys cuss more than once, that's why you usually get twenty. Right. Huh. Mm. When I came to school, 
I changed because Miss Gray showed me what's thinking time and all that. And when I first came here, I didn't get thinking time until I was new. And when I was new, I got loads of thinking time. Say like you swore you had a hot argument. You had to sit there quietly. And when there's only around a minute left, the teachers ask you, why are you here? And what have you thought about? And then we tell them, and then they say, if it's good enough, we have to go out back to play. This is thinking time. It's an opportunity for those children who have made a choice that's had a, a negative impact either on themselves or on the, on the others or their own learning or the learning of other children in the classroom. So the teacher talks to the child about that problem and talks them through it and how they could make a better choice if that same issue occurs in the future. Leon, what was the choice you made that you're thinking about now? Just running that down um, you... in an ugly way. What did you do? Down in an ugly way. What do you mean an ugly way? What does that mean? Is it not a friendly way? Not a not a kind way? Why did you make that choice? I was telling him that I was ready. Okay, but you can do that in a very friendly, very nice way, can't you? You have that skill. It's a solution focused um, approach to supporting children in developing their own self-awareness skills and you know, supporting them in improving their behaviour across the board. It's really important for our children to make reparation if there is an issue and this is where they're able to do that. I say horrible stuff about myself. Right. So is that the choice that you're thinking about? Yeah. Now, why do you think that wasn't the right choice? What, what, what happens if you do that? I'll get thinking time because in this school we don't allow the children to say horrible things about themselves. Right, so that was the consequence for this playtime that you're spending time thinking about that. But why don't we allow people to say horrible things about anybody? Because it will get into a big problem and then afterwards it will just carry on until the whole time until school is finished and then everybody will have a horrible time. Thinking time does help me change my behaviour. Because if you sit there for quite long, you think about what you've done and then it pops that bit out of your mind, so then you don't really get all your bad behaviour in your mind and then it just goes away and good behaviour pops up back. We do everything we can to replicate the structure of the mainstream um, system because it's our aim that the children move back into that very system. When I leave this school, going to Peckham Academy, then I'm going to go sixth form there and then I want to join the army. In the new school, if I misbehave, I'll be kicked out straight away. So that's why I've been coming down so I can go down and I won't get kicked out. The teachers will really look at the, t the children's learning styles and adapt their teach teaching styles accordingly in broadening their repertoire of learning skills so that when they do move back into a mainstream um, school, they're able to manage in the variety of um, styles that they'll be taught in there. So what could your next sentence be? Is it a secret? OK. Well, I'll wait here and I'll see if I can read your secret. But can you do me a favour? You need to plan how many words are going to be in your secret and write it under the four. I'll just wait here nice and gently. Miss, did Marisha ask you if she could get up? No, she didn't. No, sir. she didn't ask me either, so I, I think know, she could. That's one of her targets. It is one it? of her targets. We've got it down here. What do you want to try then, Marisha? Come on then. I can't forget him. That's okay. Can I get up? Um, I think actually you need to just do this here and then afterwards you can get up and go to the computer. Within the school there is constant, constant modelling. How to communicate, how to converse, how to acknowledge feelings. And we, we completely understand that children who are here, just like the adults who are here, have had many feelings of feeling out of control in their life. Because sometimes they're hiding something or they're afraid of something at home or something going to happen. If you're not able to make yourself safe, then we will be able to look after you until you are able to make yourself safe. But the whole constant monitoring is about that child taking responsibility. They only hold me or tell me off once in a blue moon. Our learning intention is to identify rhyme and sound patterns. But I wonder if you guys know any rhymes. 
that you can think of that you might like to just perform for the rest of the class. Yeah, it could be a... I'm seeing lots of hands. John, I'm seeing your hand going up, which means telling me that you want to be in the learning. You still need to have that conversation with Gloria before you come into the learning. OK, I think Savannah's got one now. Savannah? Oh, yeah, I've got it. Uh, uh, wait. <sighs> Savannah? <sighs> If a child is not able to take responsibility for themselves for a while, because lots of people have had, you know, experiences that you wouldn't want anyone to ever have, really. And uh, that will kind of obviously create a kind of emotional response, which is, which will feel very out of control. And we talk about integrity and what it means to us. And at Beermond, we say it's doing the right thing, even when no one is looking. And I think that's something that together we're always striving towards as much as we possibly can. In the moment you're going to be working in pairs and you're going to be putting together some limericks. I'm going to work with John and Carissa. We would try and make sure right from the off that they would start accessing some of the kind of reward type systems, some of the reward experiences, so that they realise what the point is. Wait, wait, wait. Right there. Where's that blue? Let's sort out the order first, Andrew. I can, John, I can see, by the way you're behaving now, that that playtime, John, is becoming a possibility now, whereas it wasn't before. OK, so I'm impressed with the way you've come back into the learning. Because it actually is about them changing their behaviours and changing things to be able to actually be more successful and, and realise that it is within their own control. They help you to see what, what can happen to you if you don't control your anger. School improvement is crucial to all that we do here. And we start each academic year with a path. The path stands for planning alternative tomorrows with hope. We look at Beermond and what it could be if money weren't an issue. So, for example, here, where we're thinking about our vision, our North Star thinking, we're looking at how we might be able to um, share our expertise and other strengths. So when we've sat and we've really thought about what our dreams could be for Beerman School, we move to where we are in the now. So we discuss within the team what we're doing that's, that's positive, how, what things are actually working and, and the initiatives that are really having greater impact and positive outcomes. When we've looked at that, we move back to the centre of the paper and we're looking at sensing our goals, our goals being our vision, and really wanting to create a firm foundation for target setting for the next 12 months. All of those things create all sorts of emotions throughout, with, within us all. The fear, the control, and of course, making sure we don't become complacent. I think our real achievement at Beermond is in its ethos, in walking around and hearing and seeing the colour and the laughter and the love within the school. I'll come back to visit Lily four times or three times a month, maybe even more. Um, wicked, did you see that? Did you hear that? Did you work it out? You sat there while we was talking and worked it out. What's the answer? 13. Well done. I'm sorry I confused you a bit. <clears throat> this is real life. 